Right, let's start the lecture. Um, yeah, stop me and uh, ask me if you have any questions. Uh, by the way. But uh, so today uh, will be kind of the last lecture in the first part of the course where I wanted to cover some sort of um, basics of information theory. And then starting next lecture, we'll move on to applications to statistics. Um, uh, today's lecture, I just wanted to discuss about basically how to deal with uh, uh, sort of uh, random variables with um, infinite support or, or uh, uh, distributions over um, uh, infinite spaces. And, and so far we have been kind of assuming that everything is finite uh, and we developed uh, basically the concepts of uh, entropy, mutual information, KL divergence. And today I wanted to discuss a little bit about how things carry over when, uh, uh, when we have an infinite universe of uh, over which the variables are distributed, etc. So, I mean, there are uh, two cases to consider. The first one is if you are working with a countable uh, universe or uh, the the set script X over which a random variable can take values is countable, then pretty much nothing changes. I mean, it's uh, it's so if, uh, most of the formalism is what we have all already developed before um, in the sense that now suppose you have a probability distribution uh, given by uh, these numbers P of X, uh, except that whenever you add things, uh, it will be an infinite summation. So you'll have to think of it as a limit of a series. Uh, and so, uh, anytime you write a summation, you have to be careful that um, it's actually a limit and you have to know whether it converges or diverges or when it sort of, um, uh, when it exists, et cetera. And, uh, but kind of modulo that you can still write the same summations. You can write the same sort of inequalities or treat them in pretty much the same way. And then we'll see a little bit, but, uh, so let's say we are given uh, probabilities, which now kind of the, the series is given by the summation of the probabilities adds up to one. And it's a countable universe. So uh, there is a bijection to the natural numbers. I can just think of uh, the set as natural numbers for now. Uh, so your probabilities form a converging series, which uh, sums up to one. You can define the entropy again by limits of series uh, uh, with exactly the same kind of expressions. So notice that while the expression for entropy and KL divergence is the same as before, for mutual information, I've written just one summation rather than the difference of two quantities. Uh, and I mean, uh, previously we wrote it and, and what I wrote, if you kind of just sort of separate it out into two expressions, you can write it as uh, uh, h of x minus h of um, x given y. But the reason I prefer writing it as a single summation rather than two, that uh, when you can have infinite summations, you have to be a bit careful. It can, it can happen that um, the mutual information is finite, although both the entropies uh, written on the expression on the right uh, are infinite. So, uh, Mm. So in particular, uh, when you write something as a difference of two other expressions, um, that is only valid when those two expressions are uh, uh, not, not, not both of them infinite. So, uh, so mutual information we can always write as the summation on the left, which is uh, just an expression that uh, you can derive from the finite definition. You can write it as the difference of entropy of X minus the conditional entropy of X um, uh, if both those things are finite. So you just have to be a little careful about uh, that things shouldn't become infinite, but up to that, you can write pretty much uh, the same kind of expressions and the same kind of um, uh, inequalities, et cetera, that we have developed so far. And yeah, so in general, in most cases, honestly speaking, you wouldn't have to worry too much about it because I mean, P of X 
by definition adds up to one. It's a, so it is a converging series. And you've just sort of changed it a little bit by adding a log one over P of X, which is the entropy. So uh, for most nicely behaved functions, it's not that uh, the entropy will start diverging, although it can happen. And then there is this example, which is also given as one of the problems in the textbook, but it's sort of good to see at least one example where, uh, and then not too crazy, it's a, a reasonable distribution where you can think of the probability of a natural number n as quantity n over uh, log n whole square uh, multiplied by some constant c, which we'll choose in a minute, but and defined only for n greater than or equal to two, otherwise the log will be problematic. So, and you choose this constant, uh, I should say c, to be whatever, so that the probabilities add up to one. So uh, you'll need to check that this is a converging series, and I'll say that in a minute, but uh, mm, if it's a converging series, it converges, no, the, the limit is some uh, quantity. If you just replace the C by one, that's some quantity. And you just take the reciprocal of that quantity to be the constant C so that the, the limit of the summation of the probabilities is, is one. And nothing uh, very mysterious about this constant C. You can check that uh, the series converges by just kind of upper bounding it by the integral uh, x log x whole square. And okay, I mean, yeah, you can check the calculus, but this is the indefinite integral. And uh, instead, what we are inter interested in is um, the definite integral and This will come out to be what, ln2 or something. Yeah, so this is an upper bound on the series. And uh, uh, so you, you can get, you, you can prove that the series converges. On the other hand, uh, when you look at the entropy, you will get a series of this type. And uh, because the entropy will look like, uh, you'll get uh, a bunch of terms. Um, doesn't matter what the exact terms are, but uh, you can you can lower bound it by just taking the log n term and deleting everything else and uh, you can, uh, because the integral I wrote uh, uh, goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, you can you can check that um, this specific uh, series will diverge. And so in particular, the entropy of this random variable will be infinite. And you can take two independent copies of this random variable, the mutual information will be zero, but at the same time, it, if you write it as a difference of h of x and h of x condition y, you will get the difference of two infinities, which uh, won't make sense. So just up to the Hi, fact- mother. Yeah, yeah. What is the relationship between the, uh, these discrete uh, sums and versus this integral? As in, can you always do this? You can estimate it, right? Because you can divide the integral into these kind of tiny things. Uh, and, and so you can estimate series by integrals. Uh, I see. Uh, and this holds in general, as in you, is there some tightness around, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I don't remember my sort of analysis very precisely, but uh, uh, for most reasonable functions, it holds in particular for this function, I think you can uh, uh, sort of this estimate um, holds and in general, yeah, as long as you have a continuous function, I don't think you have a problem. Uh, but 
Okay, I can I can check. Uh, if anyone remembers, please uh, feel free to speak up or correct me. But yeah, I mean, as far as I know, for continuous functions, this is fine. So. Okay, uh, I mean, a discrete uh, variable is not a continuous function, but uh, uh, yeah, as long as the thing you are integrating is a continuous function. Mm. All right. A good exercise is to compute the entropy of a geometric random variable. I think Gautam also gave this as a, as a problem in the first discussion with a specific value for p, maybe half or something. Uh, and it, it's good to, so a geometric random variable is, I mean, one way to think of it is you're just kind of uh, tossing a coin which comes up heads with probability p and uh, the value of the variable is the first uh, toss at which it comes up heads. So you can, uh, maybe the first toss was uh, tails, the second one was tails and so on. And after uh, n tosses, you finally saw heads. That's the probability that x equals n. Okay. It's a good exercise to try and compute the entropy of it. Again, write down the same summations, just check convergence, nothing much more than that. All right. So that's the countable case. It's, it's not too different from the discrete setup that we have seen, except when you write an expression, be careful about um, uh, finiteness. Uh, and I mean, the inequalities, equalities, everything we said will continue to hold as long as the terms you are writing are finite uh, inside that. All right. Uncountable setting is, is a bit more interesting. So in particular, uh, the definition of random variable that we had already breaks down. So we defined the random variable as there is some sort of outcome space omega, and then you uh, you define a distribution mu on that space or probability measure mu on that space. And now, uh, which can say that for every single outcome inside that space, you can talk of a probability. And then you define a function x, which uh, maps this space to some set of values, uh, which we were denoting by script of uh, script x. Um, and then you can define expectations, et cetera, for um, these kind of random variables. Now, already this notion of omega and mu becomes problematic when you are dealing with uncountably infinite spaces. So, uh, and I mean, I'm barely even doing a reminder here. Uh, if uh, I can add some references in particular, uh, if you are a TTIC student, you might have seen this in toolkit, but otherwise I'll kind of maybe add some references. Uh, so that you can construct various examples where just trying to define the probability of every single point uh, becomes problematic. You can even think of just trying to define the probability of every single point in the interval zero to one. And it's not quite clear how to define a distribution and, and so on. And you can uh, sort of run into contradictions that way. So the way you kind of get around this is by saying, we will not talk of probability of every point in omega, but we will kind of come up with a collection of sort of legit subsets of omega, which um, is called a sigma algebra. And you never say sort of what is the probability of some point or some arbitrary subset. You only talk about whatever subsets are included in your sigma algebra. The reason it's called an algebra is because you can kind of do operations on sets. You can take unions, you can take intersections and so on. And they still remain in the Sigma algebra. So any in each of these natural operations preserve membership in the Sigma algebra. So if you can talk of uh, some event A happening where an event is nothing but a subset of Omega. Um, so what is the chance that you land in this subset of Omega? So if you can talk of an event A happening or an event uh, B happening, then you can talk, also talk of A happening or B happening, A and B happening, and so on and so forth. So you can do all sorts of uh, kind of Boolean operations, which is um, why this is called an algebra. But then your probabilities are only defined for these sort of legit subsets uh, or the collections, uh, like whatever subsets are present in the sigma algebra. Again, we won't need to deal too much with this, uh, but when you define a random variable, you also have to be a bit careful because random variable uh, is a function which uh, um, 
which maps two spaces. So maybe uh, the random variable mapped uh, this space omega to real numbers. And now you are, uh, sort of asked me, uh, what is the probability that the value of this random variable is between zero and one? And so what I needed to do was to look at the inverse image of the interval zero to one inside omega. And uh, right, so if, if your random variable is in zero to one and you want to talk about this um, uh, interval, then I need to sort of go and look at uh, uh, omega such that uh, x of omega lies in this interval. And now maybe I realize that, okay, I'm just not allowed to talk about this set. So that becomes problematic. So formally you say that you have two sigma algebras, one in the space you started with, one in the space uh, uh, you ended up in, which is the space uh, script X. And your random variables are always uh, things such that if you wanted to kind of measure the probability of a subset in the range space, then its inverse is also a valid subset in the domain space. So uh, whenever you are trying to talk of an event about the random variable, that's a valid event in the omega space. Uh, okay, and these kind of special functions are called measurable functions. Again, uh, I'll not go into too much detail, but just it's sort of useful to know that uh, the concept of random variable change needs to change a little bit. What we will deal with uh, in this course uh, is exclusively and uh, it's sort of quite common in general is that in the range space or in terms of the values of the random variables, you deal with what is called the Borel sigma algebra, which is something you've been kind of using even if you don't know what Borel sigma algebra is. It's uh, just a collection of subsets, which includes uh, all intervals when you are thinking of the real line. So you can always talk of what is the chance the random variable is between A and B, or sort of open interval, closed interval, whichever you like. Um, uh, or in general, when you have n-dimensional space, then it includes uh, all kinds of boxes. So you can say that uh, I have the interval uh, a to a one to b one on the x-axis, a two to b two on the y-axis, and what's the chance of the random variable lies here, and so on. So, and you can also talk of uh, kind of uh, open intervals with one end which is infinity, etc. So, uh, this kind of, and I'm going to call all of these things boxes, open, closed. I'm not going to always distinguish. We'll not uh, go into too much detail about this, uh, but. In general, we will be dealing with random variables, which um, uh, kind of are measurable functions with respect to the Borel sigma algebra. Uh, and all that means, all it means is that for the random variables we are talking about, it's okay to talk of membership in any interval or any box. Um, uh, if you feel like you really want to write the sort of value of the random variable being equal to a point, um, then think more carefully, just make sure that's valid. Okay. But intervals are legit. All right. Uh, in fact, we will even specialize, most of the time we'll actually be dealing with one type of random variable, which is the Gaussian random variable. So a lot of this, uh, you don't really need to worry about if you, if you already understand these, but to uh, just say that we will, like there is a class of random variables, which is fairly uh, natural, which are such that for any uh, box, you can write the probability of lying inside that box as some integral, as the integral of some function. And this class of random variables is called continuous random variables. Uh, and again, because we are working with the Borel sigma algebra, which means that we're kind of looking at uh, uh, intervals, etc. And the natural sort of uh, weight associated or measure associated with every interval is just kind of the length of it. So the integral here is with respect to just the usual Lebesgue measure, which you are used to in terms of integrating. Uh, but I mean, yeah, uh, in principle, this can be with respect to other measures, et cetera, but we'll not need to worry too much about it. Uh, so 
A continuous random variable is one where you have uh, this uh, a function called a density function, which uh, mm, such that if you want to calculate the probability of some box or the, the random variable lands inside some box, you just integrate this function over the box. And again, presumably this is something you've also used, uh, uh, maybe you're already quite familiar with, we'll see some examples anyway, but uh, this is the class of random variables where we'll need, which we will mostly be dealing with. So you don't really need to worry too much more, but even, if you kind of work with this class of random variables, there is some care required in sort of defining entropy, uh, uh, et cetera, over, over these spaces. And we'll get to that. I mean, first of all, the issues that were there in the uh, sort of countable case of things becoming infinite still remain. It's not that because the random variable has a density function, things will always become finite. No. So the infinities are still an issue. And you always, when you write an integral, you have to say if it exists or uh, sort of when it's finite, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so when you write something as a difference of two things, you have to be careful whether these things are infinite or not. But uh, at least you can write things as integrals. And so uh, it's a slightly nicer space to write expressions. Okay. Any questions uh, about this setup? This is just the kind of random variable we'll be dealing with. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, please. So when you say continuous random variable, do you mean the, the map X is a continuous function? between? Oh, no. those two okay. So, uh, I mean, continuous random variable is a technical term. It's not, uh, I'm not, I'm not saying there is a continuous, I mean, there is some function which is continuous, but um, that function is actually the uh, sort of cumulative density function of this random variable, which is defined as uh, this integral from minus infinity to X for some point X. But uh, here, continuous random variable is a technical term, which I'm using to say that there exists a density function P of X. So that this random variable, like I can estimate the, I can write down the probability in any box. Um, it's not, I'm not saying that there is some function which is continuous, at least right now, the way I'm defining it, I'm just saying uh, there is a density function. And if there is a density function, I'll just call the random variable a continuous random variable. Okay, got it, thanks. Other questions? All right. Again, a reminder on uh, Gaussian random variables. Uh, these are probably random variables uh, you have seen, but these are also fairly natural ones that arise. Uh, in fact, we use the word n to describe the distribution, the letter n to describe the distribution because they are called normal random variables. Um, uh, and the Probability density function is this sort of funky looking expression. If you haven't seen it for the first time, it looks a little weird that you have sort of e to the minus x square or something. Uh, and this is the probability density function for a Gaussian random variable x uh, such that the expectation of that random variable is mu and what's called the variance of that random variable, which is the typical deviation from the mean um, is uh, sigma square. And just the expectation is defined uh, as you would define it in the discrete case, but now you replace things by integrals. So, and similarly, the variance is just expectation of some other expression x minus mu square. So you'll write um, uh, p of x um, so hey, hey Madur, not not to be not to be like annoying, but when no, no. you're writing p's, you're meeting the PDF. That's not a probability. I'm sorry, yeah, okay, good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I sort of debated about using P versus F uh, here. Uh, it sort of ended up using P, but yeah, I should have clarified that, thanks. So yeah, that, that's a good uh, thing to point out. So I'm using P here, uh, although it's I'm using it for this density function rather than uh, 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 
rather than a probability, a P of X uh, is, is not the probability the random variable is equal to X, it's some density function. And in fact, we don't always write down the probability of a single point X, we always write probabilities of intervals or boxes and so on. So uh, this notation is a little uh, kind of, yeah, it, it sort of conflicts a little bit with the notation we have used for probabilities, but uh, I still went with P and later with Q because in pretty much all the expressions we will see, this is treated as if you were um, kind of uh, taking the expression for entropy or KL divergence, et cetera, in terms of probabilities and just replacing uh, sort of uh, summations by integrals. Although, yes, uh, as, as Kevin pointed out, you have to be quite careful and then we will spend most of the lecture sort of uh, stressing these kind of points that um, uh, because these are not actual probabilities, uh, you have to sort of uh, treat the results of those integration or uh, the integral expressions with uh, a bit of care. But yeah, good catch, thank you. Other questions? Okay, so, I mean, yeah, so we sort of, the expression of the probability density function or this uh, P of X depends only on mu and sigma, which uh, is another way of kind of stating that once I tell you the uh, expectation or the mean uh, and uh, the variance, which is sigma square of a, a Gaussian random variable or normal random variable, uh, it's, uh, distribution is or its a density function is completely specified there is a, it's, it's just something which depends on these two parameters okay. and uh, you can define n-dimensional gaussians or multivariate gaussians or uh, which are basically n gaussians so you can think of each coordinate as a gaussian but then they have some interesting sort of joint distribution in the sense that it's not true necessarily that all coordinates are independently distributed Gaussians. They can have some sort of weird uh, uh, correlations. And this is captured by mm, these parameters now, which are kind of vector and matrix valued. So uh, here the expectation of X, where X is um, now a vector is mu, which is a vector in N dimensions and expectation of uh, x, x transpose is, is sigma, or oh, sorry, mm, x minus mu times x minus mu transpose, what is called the covariance matrix, which is sigma. And here we are kind of writing this formula, assuming that sigma is a positive definite matrix. So just because it's defined as an expectation of x, x transpose or x minus mu, x minus mu transpose, it's easy to see that it's a symmetric matrix, which means it has all uh, real eigenvalues. Um, and in fact, that expression also tells you that all eigenvalues are non-negative. Uh, and positive definite actually means that all eigenvalues are indeed positive. If it's uh, there is one eigenvalue which is zero or one or more eigenvalues, then we will just kind of uh, restrict to the basis of eigenvectors where the eigenvalues are positive and define Gaussians there. But uh, we don't need to worry about that right now. Okay. So these are kind of expressions which I'm hoping uh, you would be okay with, uh, even if you have not necessarily worked a lot with these expressions, you uh, sort of uh, understand all the kind of terms that I'm writing down. But if there is something which is unclear, I mean, I'm not uh, sort of teaching this part right now, I'm just reminding or just kind of listing things. But if there is something which is unclear, please stop me and ask. And uh, here, kind of the role of sigma in the denominator when you write the density function is, is played by uh, 
the determinant of this uh, matrix, uh, square root of the determinant of this matrix, and uh, in the in sort of uh, in the expression in the exponent or uh, e to the minus something when we write instead of writing two over uh, uh, little sigma square, we are just writing the inverse of this matrix. And the way I'm writing, I guess, uh, vectors are column vectors, uh, so that x minus mu transpose times sigma inverse times x minus mu is a number, and so uh, e to the minus of some number, which will be a non-negative number, is uh, uh, p of x, which is also a real number. Okay. So the variable can be in whatever dimensional space. Um, the probability density function is just a real valued function. It, uh, p of x is a real number. It's not a vector valued thing. Okay. That's just definitions in terms of random variables. Any questions before we proceed to define information theoretic quantities? Okay, so the first quantity is uh, differential entropy, which as I was saying, uh, uh, let's say we have a random variable, which is, yeah, is, is over a real space. Um, maybe r to the n instead of d just to, to be consistent with what I was saying before. I mean, n can be one and it's still interesting. In fact, all the three examples I'm giving you are with n equals one, but uh, it's the expression is kind of syntactically defined as if you were just sort of writing down the entropy with probabilities, but just replacing summation with integrals. But as we just said, uh, it's not quite that. Uh, and uh, this is the integral of the probability density function, not probabilities. Um, and so uh, it's good to see a couple of examples. So, mm, let's say X is just uniform distribution over uh, zero to one. Now, what does uniform distribution mean? I just said that we can't quite define the probabilities of any point. Uh, uh, so uniform distribution just means that the probability of X being in some interval a b is uh, b minus a, assuming um, uh, a and you know, sort of uh, a and b are between zero and one. Okay, so it's just saying that all intervals, uh, the probability is just proportional to their length. Okay. That's what we mean by the uniform distribution in zero one. Okay. So what's the probability density function for this? Um, The integral of what function from b to a is b minus a, or from a to b is b minus a. Wait, I'm guessing people know this, but uh, nobody is saying it. One. One. Right, so the integral of one from a to b is b minus a. Uh, so. All right, so now let's calculate the differential entropy here. Um, I mean, it's defined as an integral over the entire real space, but uh, because P of X is only non-zero between zero and one, we can write it over zero and one. Uh, as before, zero log zero, we will take to be zero. Uh, so, Which is what? Zero? Uh, yes, it's zero. And it's exactly as surprising as you sound. So it's, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's a bit weird. It's, uh, it, it comes out to be zero. Okay, now let me ask you to do the next example, which is um, uh, y is x over two. We'll see. The probability density, so uh, intuitively, and then we'll kind of see how to calculate the probability density function for this in a bit anyway, but uh, this is just the uniform distribution over the interval zero to half. Uh, and so the probability density function will be two because you integrate two uh, uniformly from zero to half, you get one, which is the total probability of being inside the interval zero. So here, the probability density function will be 
uh, two. Can you calculate the entropy and tell me how much it is? Okay, by the way, I'm hoping, so this lecture, there'll be lots of computations. So I'm hoping people will be able to do some of that uh, uh, with me and uh, hopefully also unmute themselves and answer. So. One. Uh, mm, why? Oh, yeah, two, two, two. Uh, Is that one or two? This is two. Oh, sorry, one. But this is very weird, right? Because you would expect from entropy's definition that I. I mean, so this is if this is uniformly distributed over this length, the entropy uh, should be. It's very weird, and in fact, it's even weirder because this is actually minus one. Uh, log of one half is minus one. So, first of all, we have two random variables where it seems like the entropy should be the same uh, because they are basically the same thing. We have just sort of uh, divided by two. It should not really change the amount of randomness contained in the random variable. Uh, not only are they not same, uh, the one of the quantities comes out to be zero, which was weird enough, but then it also comes out to be negative, which is kind of even funkier. Uh, you can calculate this. Uh, uh, Maybe I'll give this as an exercise, um, uh, mostly as an exercise in calculus, I think, but um, uh, you can check that it will, I think it will come out to be one minus one over L into, unless I didn't make a mistake. But, um, but again, this is something negative. This is just to point out that, okay, the way differential, and then we'll see why sort of uh, these weird things are coming up, or at least we'll justify to some extent. But before we go there, I just want to come back to this intuition of that these three should things should have been the same if we were thinking of entropy as an information content. Um, uh, and so like, uh, yeah, I guess Nati likes to give this example, but suppose we are just kind of parameterizing a distribution over plates. Okay? And we have sort of plates which are circular and we can think of the diameter, we can think of the radius or we can think of the area. And these three things kind of roughly correspond to them except that the area has some constants missing in front of it. Uh, and if you think of the distribution over sort of uh, diameter, diameters, radii, or uh, uh, areas, they should have the same entropy, but it's different. So the differential entropy is not really a reflector of how much information or how much uncertainty is there. It's, it is very much parameterized, uh, like it, it depends on the parameterization. So in some sense, at the end of the day, we are not interested in the random variable x zero to one. This is describing some other objects that we actually want to study, uh, plates or whatever else. I mean, uh, presumably sort of, um, uh, some data or, um, and so, but here it's saying that it's actually very dependent on not just the data, but how you model the data. It's sort of uh, in what parameters you choose to describe. Um, and yeah, I mean, these are perfectly valid ways, all three of them uh, describing the same thing but they have different differential entropies. So you need to be a little careful with this sort of concept and then we'll, we'll say more about that. But um, is the example okay? Just the two computations that we actually did, I'll leave the third one as an exercise. Okay. The reason, uh, or at least one explanation, this might not be the sort of only one, is that uh, some of the weird things are coming up is that if we want to think of entropy in the integral case as a measure of uncertainty, uh, we would write, need to write summations and compute sort of, sort of uh, some kind of uh, discrete entropy. And, and there we do know that this intuition holds that the entropy is a measure of uncertainty. And then uh, try to take the limit and see if we can derive the, uh, Differential entropy is some form of limit in this way that would sort of maybe try to write it as some try to explain some form of um, uh, information content or sort of amount of uncertainty or sort of help solidify this intuition. The 
And so, okay, one way of doing that is you have a random variable, which is let's say distributed over the line. Let's divide the line into very tiny intervals um, of size epsilon. And uh, let's just think of a discrete random variable, which uh, kind of takes uh, values, uh, sort of one value for uh, each of these intervals. So within the kth interval, uh, which goes from k times epsilon to k plus one times epsilon, where k is any integer, uh, we will pick a point uh, x sub k, and we will say that the random variable y, which is something new we defined, um, uh, will take, within this interval, it can take the value x sub k. So it's it's a discrete random variable. It's not finite yet. It's uh, still uh, countably infinite, potentially at least, um, if if the uh, if x was defined over the whole real line. But uh, even if x was defined over the interval zero to one, which was the case in all three of the previous examples, so in that case this will become finite. But still, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, in either case it's kind of it, it's discrete, and that already is a, is a good thing. Okay. Now the Problem is, um, okay, and how are we choosing this uh, point x sub k? Well, by mean value theorem, there will be a point x sub k in this interval such that uh, the value of p at the point will be equal to, uh, uh, sorry. epsilon times the value of uh, at the point will be equal to the integral uh, over this interval. So, uh, okay, this is just kind of yeah, stating the mean value theorem in terms of the integrals. Uh, and yeah, instead of the derivative, but uh, so we will define this discrete random variable and uh, we can think of what the entropy in this case, kind of honest to goodness, entropy of this discrete random variable is. And uh, let's try to see if uh, we can think of the differential entropy as some form of limit uh, of the entropy of this discrete random variable, which is kind of measuring how the continuous random variable is. It's just sort of saying that instead of looking over the entire real line, I will try to look at discrete intervals so that I can talk of discrete random variables where I know how to interpret entropies, et cetera. Okay. And this um, turns out to be slightly, I mean, okay, we can, we can write it down, but uh, first of all, let's just check that the probabilities add up to one. So, so if you look at the summation over uh, K epsilon times, uh, sorry, P of X sub K, this is, equal to summation over k integral sort of k times epsilon to k plus one times epsilon uh, times epsilon, oh sorry, it's not epsilon. Which kind of, uh, mm, if you take the limit, uh, it sort of goes to the integral over the whole space as epsilon goes to zero, which is one. So you can think of this as a valid uh, discrete random variable and you can take limits as epsilon goes to zero. Uh, but I mean, even if epsilon doesn't go to zero, you can add these uh, intervals up and you can think of that as the whole uh, sort of inter uh, integral, sorry. Uh, now let's think of the entropy. So H of Y is, uh, summation over k, uh, mm, epsilon times p of x k times log one over epsilon times p of x k. Okay. And we can break it into two summations. So you can write it as summation k times epsilon times p of xk uh, log one over p of xk. Um, plus summation over k epsilon times p of xk. Uh, 
times log 1 over epsilon. And now, as epsilon goes to 0, the first quantity converges to uh, the limit that which is differential entropy, but the second quantity goes to infinity. Or you can think of uh, you can say that h of y uh, is h of x plus this sort of log one over epsilon, which depends on the discretization. This is just an intuition. It's not a, it's not a formal proof, but in some sense, the reason you get all these sort of weird numbers, zero or negative one and so on, is because it's actually missing in, ad, in a sort of additive infinity term, which is the limit of this discretization, if you really wanted to think of it as information content. And this term is kind of doubly problematic because when you multiply the random variable uh, x by two, then the discretization becomes kind of half as good. So, uh, or, or maybe twice as good, uh, depending on where, how the density changes, I guess twice as good. So the role of epsilon is different at different levels of discretization. So uh, that is why the quantity not only doesn't represent information content, it kind of has a factor. This factor also depends on scaling, etc. So it uh, uh, the differential entropy as defined is a quantity which changes with scaling and so on. Okay. So it's uh, not quite correct to, I mean, yeah, so far it seems like we just wrote down the expression, but it's pretty useless because um, it's sort of, it's negative, it can be zero, it changes uh, with natural things. So it doesn't seem useful for anything. Uh, it's not quite, and it can be useful for some, first of all, it's a useful way of computation and uh, sort of computing things like mutual information, which we will see uh, kind of make sense in general uh, without all these sort of caveats. Uh, and secondly, it also makes sense to compare the entropies of two variables when you have sort of accounted for uh, this kind of natural transformation that you that of you're not scaling things and somehow you have set additional constraints which kind of fix the scale of the variables. So uh, a common which we will see is that you are sort of talking of maybe the first and second moments of these variables are fixed and now uh, sort of what is the largest entropy I can have. So now you can't really scale things because you've already said that sort of expectation of x square is fixed to something, okay, fixed to a number. So uh, once you sort of put some of these kind of uh, scaling or normalization constraints, after that, it makes sense to compare uh, uh, differential entropies, but it's still problematic to think of it as information content and you have to be a bit careful when dealing with it. Okay, any questions? Oh, there's a question. Yeah, please. So, so when you do the rescaling, like when you take y equals to x over two, uh -huh. and w but, but the discretization is always taking epsilon to zero, right? So what is the, because uh, that- uh, but there's uh, this, uh, log one over epsilon factor, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yes, if you take it to zero, that factor is infinity. And then, yeah, I mean, uh, h of like the capital H is always infinite. Uh, so uh, I'm not really saying anything, but, uh, when I'm thinking of the differential entropy, how the two are kind of going to infinity for a finite epsilon, then there is a slight difference. That's about it. Uh, and, and then that's the additive difference of plus one that shows up between the two. It's just that the kind of epsilon changes by a factor uh, of two. And so there is a plus one difference between the two quantities. I mean, I see. you add infinity to zero and infinity to minus one, it's kind of doesn't make sense to compare the two, but without adding that infinity, which is the log one or epsilon, we can compare the two and that's the minus one. But yeah, it's a, I'm still trying to actually emphasize that it doesn't quite make sense to compare because at least not in this setting yet, because our notion of information content is not really meaningful here, at least with the differential entropy. Right, thanks. Other questions? Okay. Scale divergence is actually a much more nicely behaved quantity. So you can define it the same way. You can define it as an integral as if you replace probabilities by kind of probability density functions and replace summation by integral. The formally looks like the same expression. Uh, 
these are now probability densities instead of uh, probabilities. But the quantity actually behaves uh, nicely pretty much as regular KL divergence does because there is another definition which can be defined as uh, in terms of uh, finite random variables and uh, the two definition turn out to be equivalent. This was I think mean, like the original differential entropy and differential KN divergence were defined in Shannon's original paper, although this sort of more modern treatment, uh, which I'll sort of say is, is due to Kolmogorov and Pinsker. Uh, and I'll put some more references uh, in the notes in case you want to read in more detail about it. But uh, it's sort of, uh, instead of looking at KL divergence of this continuous random variable X, which can potentially take infinitely many values, et cetera, Let's define a finite nice random variable, which is, uh, so now let's think of uh, the script X as our new omega and define a function which takes values in some finite set one to n. Okay. So this is just a partition of omega. We have said that, or a partition of this script X. We have said on these points in script X, we are going to take a value one. On these points, we're going to take a value two and so on. So I'm dividing it into uh, n subsets. These n subsets should be kind of again valid subsets in the sigma algebra and so on. So this partition needs to be measurable. But now y is a finite valued random variable. It's only taking values between one and n. And uh, it's a good exercise to uh, so and and y is a function of uh, x now because. Uh, uh, if you know the value of x, you know some point in this space script x and uh, y is a function which maps it to the interval or to the, to the set one to n. Okay. So uh, it will be true that, uh, okay, this is an exercise to check. Uh, I mean, this is not necessarily just an exercise for um, Uh, infinite case, but also think about this exercise for the finite case. Um, mm, let me just write y. I already written that y is a function of x. It will be true that. Um, Uh, if you compute functions, then the KL divergence uh, will go down. That's something uh, you can check as an exercise. But mm, uh, here, the differential KL divergence uh, for X is actually defined as, or e sort of it's equal to, or this is an alternate definition, is the maximum over all Y and all sizes of the partitions n. Uh, so so it's actually the maximum or the supremum rather because this is uh, potentially an infinite set again, but the supremum over uh, KL divergence of random variables y's which are finitely supported random variables. These are kind of um, nicely behaved variables which satisfy all the properties that we have looked at so far. And the sort of differential KL divergence can be written as a supremum of these. It's not true for differential entropy, but for KL divergence, yes. So anytime you have an expression which involves KL divergence, you can sort of be much more reassured that things will behave as they do in the discrete case. You don't really need to worry too much about it, except that if you happen to split that expression in terms of two things, then check if they are finite, et cetera. But otherwise, it sort of has the same properties. So things like Pinsker's inequality still holds uh, for the differential version of the KL divergence and so on. So a lot of the, uh, and we'll see a little more. But KL divergence is a much more nicely behaved uh, quantity. So mutual information, again, let's write down the kind of one term expression rather than the two term expression as before in the countable case. Uh, I already kind of gave as a homework problem to say that uh, mutual information can be written as a KL divergence. So everything nice that I said about KL divergence also holds for mutual information. 
that uh, mutual information is um, kind of always well defined. You can interpret it uh, correctly as some sort of measure of how much to in information one variable reveals about the other. Uh, you can write down all kinds of uh, inequalities that we have written about it. Uh, in, in particular, it's non negative. Um, uh, and you can also write it as a difference of differential entropies just by kind of splitting the integral expression. But then you have to be careful. You have to say that when the integrals are well defined, etc. So when you split a quantity which is well defined in terms of two quantities, make sure that they both are well defined. Uh, okay. So that's something which uh, hopefully will not bother us too much, but we will have to kind of live with in infinite spaces, uh, always just making sure things are well defined. Okay. Just in terms of inequalities, everything that we saw about KL divergence. So first of all, Jensen's inequality still holds, um, which is good because we've been pretty much using it in every lecture so far. Um, so one of the so if, uh, most important proof techniques uh, for a lot of these kind of convex function manipulations. Uh, uh, similarly, Pinsker's, which we proved. Uh, so you can also define the L1 distance as an integral uh, and uh, uh, define Pinsker's inequality uh, for this version. Um, both of these can be defined in terms of these kind of partitions. So Pinsker's inequality uh, continues to hold. Um, similarly, Things like uh, uh, conditioning reduces entropy on average, continues to hold when at least the left hand side is uh, uh, finite. Um, uh, I mean, okay, also have to be a little careful. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, left hand side is finite, should be okay. Uh, mm. You can write sort of equalities. Uh, so again, uh, sort of um, okay. So uh, as before, uh, sort of uh, when it's, there is equality, you have mutual information which is zero, and you can again analyze that by Jensen's inequality. Uh, Subadditivity uh, still holds. Um, so you can define joint entropy. If you have X distributed over Rn, uh, Y distributed over Rn, then X comma Y is just some other random variable distributed over uh, R to the two N. So you can again uh, talk of X comma Y lying in some boxes and so on, uh, on these uh, events. And you can define a density function for the pair X comma Y, which is just some big random variable. So the treatment kind of carries over. You can define uh, joint uh, differential entropy and you can define mutual information in terms of that, et cetera. So all of those things uh, kind of carry over as before. Uh, Subadditivity still holds. Um, uh, you get equality if things are independent. Uh, mm. Except that, yeah, I mean, uh, you just, uh, whenever you write things uh, which involve multiple terms, uh, so if, uh, you have to just save and define. So those, uh, the, those issues will arise, but up to that, you can do the rest of the computation you are used to. Uh, and in particular, KL divergence and mutual information are, are quantities which are okay to deal with. Uh, uh, note that mutual information can also be infinite. I'm not saying that it's bounded. It uh, behaves nicely, it measures information content, but in particular, uh, mutual information can be uh, infinite even in the countable case, right? Because um, uh, we just saw a random variable whose entropy is infinite and the mutual information between X and X is just the entropy of X. So. Uh, Mutual information can be infinite. Uh, it's just that sort of uh, it's non-negative. It, it uh, the positivity of it gives you uh, things about subadditivity of uh, joint entropy, etc. But it, it, um, uh, so it's well behaved. That doesn't mean it's always finite. Okay. Now 
I want to do a couple of computations, just get used to computing this sort of differential entropies and KL divergences. Uh, in particular, we'll mostly need them for Gaussian distributions, but yeah, it's just good to try our hand at a couple of computations. Any questions about uh, what we said so far? Um, I mean, in general, like the chapter in Cover and Thomas uh, is a good source about the information about uh, differential entropy and so on. Some of these uh, issues of um, uh, uh, this kind of measurable functions or um, uh, the partitions requiring uh, being measurable and so on is is explained in a book by uh, Robert Gray, I guess, and I'll put a link uh, in the course notes. So uh, uh, I'll also add a link to a survey, which I like, uh, sort of maybe a student paper or something, but it has some very nice examples about uh, when differential entropy sort of doesn't behave well, etc. Okay. Let's compute one simple, I mean, we already sort of computed this for A equals two, but let's see this a little more generally. Uh, and we looked at when X was a uniform random variable. Let's think of X as any continuous random variable, which means it has a density function. Okay. Uh, and now there will be a density function for X and a density function for Y. So I'm going to call them P sub X and P sub Y. It's um, because I'm not calling them P of X and P of Y because I also need to compute these functions at a point. So I need another uh, uh, term in the bracket. So let's just say P sub X and P sub Y. And we can say, although like the ent differential entropy doesn't behave uh, com sort of uh, completely as expected in the sense that it's not invariant under scaling, it, it sort of varies relatively nicely under scaling, which is just up to affecting this sort of scaling uh, epsilon. But other than that, it doesn't really uh, change things too much. So if you have uh, y, which is a times x, then uh, the entropy of y or different differential entropy. And we write it with this little h also to kind of emphasize that uh, it's a little bit of a fake entropy. Uh, mutual information and KL divergence are written with the same notation, but we use little h for differential entropy. Uh, okay. And now, uh, so this is sort of um, calculus about how to uh, calculate integrals with change of variables and so on. So I'll not get into too much, but here we can actually say relatively easily, let's say A is greater than zero and I'll leave the case when A is less than zero as an exercise, it uh, won't change things too much. Okay, but uh, H of X, let's say we already know, we, we can write it as the integral of P sub X. Um, uh, Yeah, let's say uh, we are talking about random variables with uh, distributed over R. So these are one dimensional random variables and we'll get to n dimensional ones in, uh, on the next slide. Okay. Uh, and we already know. Okay. Now we need to compute uh, sort of, we don't even know what is the density function of uh, P sub Y. Uh, and we want to understand it in terms of hopefully the density function of X so that we can relate the entropy of a differential entropy of Y to differential entropy of X. So yeah, there's just a little bit of back of the envelope kind of calculation, but uh, uh, what we want is uh, that for every, okay, let me actually, instead of a box, let me just explicitly say interval, let's say B1 to B2, uh, what we want is that, uh, uh, mm, okay. we can write down the probability that uh, X uh, lies between B1 and B2 as this integral. At the level of probabilities, we know how to relate X and Y pretty easily. So we can write it as the probability that um, Y lies in the interval B1 divided by A to B2 divided by A, right? Or sorry, maybe A times that? Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Maybe we can write it easily, but should still be careful. Please check my computations uh, and not better yet uh, also do them along yourself. But um, Okay, and now we can write them in terms of whatever is the supposed density function of y. Uh, Uh, and now change variables in this integral uh, to if, uh, y is ax. So we will get the integral b1 to b2, p sub y at a times x uh, times k times dx. And we want these two integrals to be the same for every b1 and b2. Uh, so for every box, uh, the probability of um, y being in the interval a b1 to a b2 or the probability of x being inside b1 and b2 should be the same probabilities. Uh, that's just uh, what it means to say that uh, the variable y is equal to a times x. It's not a pointwise relationship because the variable is not defined pointwise. It's just relationship uh, on probabilities of being in intervals. Uh, and sort of one way of doing this and so we can compute um, uh, p of y at a times x should be equal to uh, p of x uh, at a point x uh, divided by a or rather uh, p of y at point y should be equal to p of x at point y divided by a the whole thing divided by a. Okay, so that's just going from one density function to another. It's um, as I said, it's um, oh, somehow it disappeared. It's just an exercise in in, in change of variables. Uh, nothing uh, much more than that. Uh, and you can now compute the differential entropy of y. Mm. Okay, let me skip the exact computation, but uh, uh, yeah, if you if you just plug in the SNL sort of expression for p of y that we uh, just computed and change variables again inside the integral, uh, you will get that this is uh, log a. And uh, you can check that um, uh, when the probability density function is um, uh, is a function which is always a non-negative number. So when uh, uh, it takes a value which is a non-negative number, so when you have a which is negative, it will just be scaled by the the absolute value of a rather than a itself. So that I'll sort of uh, leave as an exercise. Any questions about this? I mean, I'm not necessarily doing all the computations because I'm just assuming that they might be boring for you, but not necessarily because um, uh, I don't want to sort of uh, cover those details. So in case there is something which is unclear, do stop me and ask. Uh, I just don't want to spend too much of your time just doing computations. Okay, this is, sort of the n-dimensional version of uh, what we wrote on the previous slide where, uh, and so here, uh, I mean, it's the same kind of computation, except you need to know uh, how sort of integrals change when you sort of uh, uh, change variables. So, uh, mm. In particular, if you have um, uh, y1, which is a function of 
let's say x1 to xn and then y2 which is a function of x1 to xn and so on. Um, uh, and then if you have an integral which is um, written in terms of y's, uh, and you want to write it as an integral in terms of the x's, um, uh, so instead of y, you can write down the explicit function of x's, uh, same for y n. Then you need to multiply by some quantity which is um, which corresponds sort of captures this change of variable in multivariate uh, setups, which is called the Jacobian for the change of variables. It's just the determinant of uh, this matrix where you uh, you have these entries which are. Uh, corresponding to partial derivatives um, and so on. In our case, when uh, y is equal to a times x, you will just get uh, the determinant of a in absolute value uh, as the transformation that you will need to do when you change uh, variables in an integral with, and after that it's the same computation. Instead of an interval, you compute over a box and you calculate probability density functions. The same and it's kind of nice that uh, shifting by a coordinate doesn't change um, again because the partial derivative now in this case uh, will be the identity matrix. Um, uh, so all you will get is that um, uh, P sub Y evaluated at uh, Y will be uh, P sub X evaluated at uh, y minus c, but because the integral in kind of entropy is from minus infinity to in infinity, just changing additively c in the variable won't change the integral at all. And so you will get the entropies um, are the same. Okay. So these are things which, um, yeah, if, if you want, I can calculate in more detail, but otherwise I'll ask you to check these, um, maybe recalling some of uh, the calculus uh, from, from college courses. Uh, uh, I also had to look up some calculus from college courses for this. But okay. uh, an example which comes up quite often, uh, which is just computing the entropy of a one dimensional Gaussian. So, uh, so recall that the density function for a one dimensional Gaussian was um, square root two pi, uh, let's say sigma squared, but inside the square root uh, times e to the minus x minus mu whole square divided by two sigma squared. And so we can write down the differential entropy of this as uh, sort of p of x times log one over p of x. And let me just expand the log and not the p of x for now. In a second, that will become clear why. Mm. Okay, and uh, so because we have an e to the power something, it would be much nicer if we had a log base e rather than log base two. This kind of comes up and in fact, information theory half the time log base two is convenient, half the time log base e. So uh, we will just uh, write it as um, ln divided by ln two and we'll just take the log base two outside. So, okay, and 
the first term here i mean other than p of x whatever is uh, inside the bracket uh, ln of 2 pi sigma square is just some constant so uh, and the integral of p of x is 1 the next term is the integral of p of x times x minus mu whole square which is just the expectation of x minus mu square which uh, is kind of uh, defined to be sigma square so we know that integral of p of x times x minus mu whole square is equal to sigma square so then the expression simplifies uh, significantly it gets 1 over ln 2 times uh, mm, half times ln of square root no oh, sorry the square root is one mm. yeah and you can simplify it to a nice looking expression which is uh, so uh i mean yeah nothing dramatic it's uh, mm. i'll okay maybe i'll not rush through the kl divergence computation i'll do it in the next lecture uh, but let me just say something about computing the kl about the n dimensional gaussian and maybe i'll also just go over this uh, the next lecture so as not to rush it but uh here instead of explicitly computing with the sort of uh, matrix expressions and so on you can you can cheat a little bit so first of all because this is just uh, if you consider a gaussian with a mean zero and a covariance matrix identity which is just n independent coordinate wise gaussians um, then you can write uh, because of the sub additivity of entropy that this will be less than equal to the sum but also these are independent so you can actually write it as um, the differential entropy of each of the coordinates each of which is a standard gaussian so you get n times uh, log of 2 pi e which is just what we saw on the previous uh, page it doesn't depend on the mu because shifting by a mean doesn't change entropy and uh again because shifting by a mean doesn't change entropy you can also uh study the entropy of a gaussian with uh, mean mu and uh, covariance matrix sigma relatively easily because you can just think of y as uh, sigma to the half times x plus mu where x uh, hmm is is a mean zero uh, variance one gaussian okay and we know how a differential entropy changes when you change it by uh, a a matrix uh, you scale it by matrix or when you shift it so this is um, kind of uh, relatively easy so you get uh, h of x plus half times log of absolute value of the determinant of sigma sigma is positive definite by the way so the determinant will be uh, always positive uh, mm. and h of x we already computed which is uh, n times 2 pi uh, sorry so i'll just write it as determinant of sigma so you can compute the entropy we will also need the kl divergence of the gaussians we'll compute it next time but uh, there are just some examples of how to use uh, some of the things we developed most of the time you can get away with just sort of scaling and translation but um, uh, when you are working with other random variables uh, you you might need to be a little careful just again in terms of things being well defined etc any questions any comments was the lecture too fast too slow too boring so i can also turn off the recording if you want to tell me after that so uh but there could i ask about um so this this uh why 
for the discretization of X for computing the K. Uh -huh, of course, yeah. Well, Let me go there. Um, so, yeah, as I said, this is not actually a computation, it's just an intuition, but yeah, go on. One slide forward. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um, uh, so okay. The probabilities for Y is sort of defined by whatever the pre image is. Of yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so Y partitions the space script X into n different sets. Let's even say n is equal to two. So it just divides it into two sets. Um, and when you define the probability of each of these sets, you just kind of integrate over the entire set, uh, the density function of uh, script no, of the variable capital X. And that's the probability of this set. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I should have said that, thanks. Other questions? Yeah, I'll link to the book by Gray for this. So you can do this much more generally. You don't necessarily need uh, uh, this kind of integration over Lebesgue measure and so on. You can, you can like KL divergence kind of behave much more robustly and then you can, uh, you can work with more general measurable random variables for this setup. Uh, entropy, you have to be a bit more careful. 